Hey guys, Andy with Grundle Hunter. Today I wanted to show you some testing we've been doing with a couple of popular 6.5 Grundle loads. There's the uh, Hornady 123 grain SST, popular for deer, antelope, animals like that. Also in the same kind of category is the Barnes 115 grain, TAC TX, their Vortex line, I think you say it. And when we get near the end of the video, I'm going to show you some of our some of our graphs with all the ballistics data, so you can geek out on that if you're anything like me and like velocities and energies. Um, but before we get there, uh, I want to show you us shooting it and some of the tests we did. Specifically, I want to show you how they performed and how they performed and compared to how their manufacturers said they would perform. So. Real quick, let's look at how Hornady and Barnes said these bullets should behave and then see if they behave that way going through our targets. The SST is a polymer tipped, copper jacketed, lead core bullet. According to Hornady, the SST is designed to deliver tremendous shock on impact while expanding quickly and reliably, particularly at higher velocities. They also say that a mid body cantilever helps keep the core and jacket together. And also, regarding their exclusive interlock ring, it is designed to lock the core and the jacket together to maintain bullet integrity during bullet expansion, ensuring maximum weight retention and increasing the chances of complete pass-throughs. So from the SST, here's what we're looking for. We want to see it expand quickly. We want the lead core and copper jacket to stay together. We want good weight retention, meaning not too much fragmenting. And finally, we're looking for deep penetration. Hornady says it'll do these things, so we're going to find out. Now on to the Barnes TAC TX, a polymer tipped special purpose expanding monolithic bullet. According to Barnes, these all copper bullets provide destructive power, double diameter expansion, maximum weight retention, and devastating energy transfer. They also say that the 6.5mm 115 grain TAC TX BT was designed and optimized for the 6.5 Grendel and its velocity range and that they have better weight retention than lead core bullets. So from the TAC TX, here's what we're looking for. Double diameter expansion of the bullet, meaning we want to see it at about 0.528 inches. Maximum weight retention, so the recovered bullet should weigh close to what it did before firing. Better weight retentions than the lead core SST. We want to see devastating energy transferred to our targets. That's what Barnes says it'll do, so that's what we're going to be looking for. All right, let's shoot. Our first target is 28 one inch layers of foam soaked in water like sponges. The idea behind this target is not only to catch the bullets, but also to give us a good visual of how the bullets perform as they penetrate deeper and deeper. First up is the 123 grain Hornady SST. Remember, one of the things we were looking for was rapid expansion. Just a few inches in, we were getting just that. Five inches in, a really nice wound cavity has emerged, and it's also here that we first begin to notice bullet fragments. Passing through inches seven and eight, you can see a bit of a shotgun pattern from the fragments visible in the foam. The wound channel at nine inches begins to close down a little, and in layer 10, we found a decent piece of copper jacket. Really, throughout all these layers of foam now, we're finding lead and copper fragments. Again, one of the things we were looking for was good weight retention and not too much fragmenting. It doesn't appear like we're getting that. In fact, after recording, we went through the foam more closely and there was a lot of fragments not caught on camera. It was at 17 inches that the copper jacket, or what was left of it, stopped. The lead core seems to have continued on, but the jacket and core staying together was something we were going to keep an eye out for. It was in layer 23 that we found the remnants of the lead core. In total, the parts of the jacket and core that didn't fragment off weighed 49.8 grains. With a 123 grain bullet, that's 40% weight retention. With penetration of nearly two feet, and looking at the overall condition of the foam, the SST definitely did some damage, but perhaps not exactly as advertised. Next up is the 115 grain Barnes TAC TX, which seems to be expanding right away as well, even a little quicker than the SST. 
Like the SST, by 5 inches in, there's a heck of a nice cavity. Now with the SST, its cavity seemed to max out around 8 inches deep, but I'd say the TAC TX did so in layer 9. So very similar in that regard, but the TAC TX did noticeably more damage to the foam, and it did it without fragmenting. In fact, throughout the peeling back of these layers, we couldn't find anything for fragments. 18 inches in, you'll notice something interesting that's clearly visible in the foam. The bullet has begun to tumble and is going through the target sideways. It's also starting to take a bit of a right-hand turn. At 26 inches deep, we find our bullet. It's almost turned back around toward us. As it turns out, the TAC TX bullet did punch all the way through the 28 inches of foam and bounced off the 2x6 on the back end. So with the Barnes bullet, we were looking for maximum weight retention, which I'd say we got, as it still weighed 114.2 grains of its original 115. That's better than the lead core bullet, just as was claimed. We also wanted to see devastating energy transfer. Looking at the wound channel, especially in the first 10 inches, I'd give that claim a positive nod. Finally, we were looking for the diameter of the bullet to double in size. Well, we measured it, and going through saturated foam, we sure came close. It wound up being 0.521 inches, so seven thousandths of an inch less than double. And actually, I'd like to show you one of these Barnes bullets that my son recovered from a deer he shot. It weighs 114.5 grains of the original 115 and has a diameter of 0.593 inches, which is a bit more than double the original size. That particular deer dropped in his tracks. The second target is a line of one gallon water jugs. Let's see if the bullets perform different going through these than they did going through the saturated foam. The 123 grain SST exploded the first two water jugs and was captured in the third. The bullet didn't fragment as much in this test. The remainder of the copper jacket and lead core weighed 70.7 .7 grains for 57% weight retention. That's definitely better than the first test, but I'm not sure it qualifies as maximum weight retention if 43% of the bullet weight fragmented. The 115 grain Tag TX exploded the first three water jugs, penetrated all the way through the fourth and fifth, and was captured in the sixth jug. It did actually poke a hole on the back side of the sixth, but stayed inside of it. Looking at the holes in the fourth, fifth, and sixth jugs, it appears as though once again this Barnes bullet may have been tumbling as it seems to have taken a turn up and to the right. As in the layered foam test, the bullet expanded very well to almost double its original diameter and had nearly 100% weight retention at 114.2 grains. It's true enough that saturated foam and water jugs aren't exactly living animals, so let's talk about that. In fact, if, if you have experience with either one of these bullets, go ahead and drop a comment below. Alright, so personally I have taken quite a few white-tailed deer in Wisconsin with both of these 6.5 ground loads, both the SST and the Barnes. In fact, uh, the first, first deer I ever shot with the Grundle was with the SST bullet, and I mean, she went 30-40 yards maybe and dropped dead, and it was one of the best blood trails of any deer I've killed with any caliber, probably top three blood trail, I mean it was pouring out both sides. Definitely, definitely penetrated both sides. Bought another deer I had, maybe a couple seasons later, um, shot her from 20, 30 yards away, broadside. She dropped right there, but then she got up and took off running. Uh, we went to follow the blood trail. There, there wasn't a ton there. It seemed like an entry without an exit. And she went a couple hundred yards before she, before she bedded down to die. Um, so I've seen kind of both results. I've had a lot more good results with the SST than poor. Um, but when, when the Barnes 115 grain came out back, I don't know, what, five, six years ago now, I switched to it mainly so that I'd have the ability to talk to customers. I wasn't dissatisfied with the SST, but I wanted to be able to talk intelligently to customers about this new load. So I switched to it, and I tell you, I, I haven't looked back. We've, you know, myself, my sons, all hunting with it. We've had an awful lot of deer that are just dead right there. 
you know, and having talked to a lot of customers over the years on the phone and stuff, you know, I've come to find that some people are, are not big fans of the SST, but an awful lot of people have killed an awful lot of game with them and, and in different calibers and, you know, bigger calibers and certainly the Grundle. I think the SST has been around since probably oh, the late nineties or something. Um, but a lot of people have killed a lot of animals with the SST. In fact, we, uh, we've got some customers down from uh, Amarillo, Texas and him and and his daughters he's got twin daughters they they do a lot of different hunts stuff from from deer and antelope up to even elk with their with their six five grundles and he has a load for the sst um they even they even took out a uh, large mule deer buck at a little over 650 yards actually which i'm not necessarily saying i would encourage that uh that particular shot but um, you know, that's a real world result with that bullet. So you can't just completely poo poo it because they have pretty good success with that bullet. Okay, for the geeks who stuck it out this long and are just dying to see my ballistic graphs, we're going to get to that right now. We're going to look at how these two loads compare as far as velocity, energy, and trajectory. We gathered these numbers from a 22 inch Grendel at about a thousand feet above sea level on an 80 degree day, 50% humidity and 30 inches of mercury for the barometric pressure. One quick note as we jump into these numbers, the, the SST velocities were a bit slower than I was expecting. We were looking back through some of our notes other times we've shot this stuff and it was about a hundred feet per second slower on this day than, than we've seen in the past. Now I, I know sometimes Ammunition manufacturers are kind of forced to change up their recipe if, if certain powders aren't available. Um, they try to keep the velocities and pressures and accuracy consistent. It doesn't always work. So just a little caveat I'd throw out there before we jump in. In any case, you can see here that the Barnes bullet starts out faster, but due to the superior ballistic coefficient, the Hornady bullet overtakes it just after 150 yards. Both bullets start out with nearly identical amounts of energy, but again, due to the high BC of the SST, it maintains it better downrange. The Barnes bullet hits 1,000 foot-pounds of energy at 275 yards, and the SST makes it out past 350 yards, with just a touch past, before dipping below 1,000 foot-pounds. For their trajectories, you can see for yourself that they're nearly identical out to 500 yards. I think if you continued this graph out to maybe a thousand yards, you'd see another significant advantage to the SST, but inside 500, they're pretty darn close. Well, I think that's going to be it for this one. If you found it interesting, you know, give us a like, uh, drop us a comment. We want to do more of these videos, these comparisons, not, not just in the 6.5 Grendel, probably some more, more 6 ARC. We've done some, uh, more 22 ARC. So if there's any, any specific bullets that you'd like to see compared or, or barrel lengths, drop us, drop us a comment below. Um, otherwise, I guess we'll, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.